Welcome back to the Sound for More channel. It's Leo speaking. Today I'm going to start a new series of tutorials on Rapid Composer. Before I continue, I would like to remind my viewers to subscribe as it helps with growing the channel. Thank you very much. You can run Rapid Composer as a standalone, like in this case, but you can also run it inside a host like Ableton Live, Studio One, Logic Pro, etc etc. So what is it? Well, it's an amazing tool which allows you to create fantastic composition. You can create rhythms, you can generate bass line, chord lines, etc, etc. There is so much that you can do. In this first tutorial, I'm going to show you the basics really. So just to get used to the user interface so that um, as we progress with the series of tutorials, so it will be familiar on how to know. Well, it will be familiar to you how to navigate uh, the app. Okay, I'm running inside a MacBook, and um, as you can see, this is the interface that um, will be presented to yourself when you run it uh, the first time. There is a lot here. So starting from the top here, it says composition. Oops, I just, uh, let's minimize it. Okay, let's minimize the top bar. It says composition there. You can go also to phrase editor. You can go to a melody editor. You have a lot of different uh, options, including, for example, an MIDI import. Here is where you have your settings as well. And then again, you can find also sub uh, menus, like in this case, you are on the setting, but you can see the audio the plugins, the sound fonts, and it comes with some sound fonts, which you can use, of course, for your composition, your setting for preview, location, etc., etc. So there is quite a lot. Well, let's go back to composition. Now, at the bottom here, you have the usual transport control, so you can go back to the beginning, the end, you can stop, you can play, record, you can go on a loop, you can activate the metronome. So when, when you hover your mouse and you wait for a bit, it will give you also a bit of help. So in this case, it will say stop playback, jump to the beginning if already stopped. Right click for panic. So you can right click and it says panic or sounds are muted. Now, when you actually hover your mouse and you see an arrow, like in this case, pointing down, it means that there are other options. So in this case, if you click on it, it will activate the looping. So in order to access the additional option, right click with your um, mouse and, and then you access the other option. Similar to here, you can activate the metronome like so. And um, if you right click, you have access to the additional options uh, for the metronome, including the instrument and that will be used, which in this case is also a sound font, which is really nice because you can change that sound font as you like for your metronome. So really nice. Here you have access to your um, where you are in terms of the timeline, which you can also change. And it's quite interesting as you click and hold and transform into this cursor so you can move up and down and you can see the cursors in the middle, which actually is also moving. You can click on here. You can have access to, for example, to give it a different name. Like so, you have different options. Okay, so this says it's part one. Here you can change the, the type of code, the root, um, the scale here if you want to do so, the bits per minute, the... Um, bits per measure and then you can go into additional settings here as well then progressing here you have if you click in here you can have access to create a new composition open a new one a recent one there are so many different options you can import a midi file export it as well export it as a WAV file as an AF file as well really a lot of options here you can click again, you can add an instrument, an audio track, a folder track, a track from a template. So as you can see, you have a different option. You can see also the shortcut as well. And then clicking here again, you can go to phrase editing, note editing. You can see the shortcuts on the right hand side. You can adjust the snap here, the grid, the preview, if you want it on and off, the um, phrase transposition, which you can go by note, phrase, octave, and the phrase rescale. Uh, which, uh, sorry, resize, which can go by scale, repeat, sustain, and regenerate. And here is a, you have your um, main view where you can create your code, your progression, etc., etc. You have access to this uh, timeline. You can click on the plus sign here to expand it. You have an option for the master track. And this is your first track, which says, um, in this case, stereogram piano. 
okay and then if you go below here and it will change to these uh, cursor when you can adjust it to sorry to this icon in terms of the mouse cursor and then you can change the size of um, of the particular track you can click on the plus sign and you can create a new track you can move from one track to the next just clicking on it right click and you have the different options which is really interesting. So this is where you have general option, variation, main CC, etc., etc. It's quite interesting. On the general, you have a lot, and under here, instrument, for example, if you were running it as a plugin, you would have access to host as well. But in this case, for example, let's load, for example, a pigment, and it will load pigment as an AUV frame. And if I click edit, it will go inside that um, uh, pig pigment uh, um, plugin. So. You can do a lot of different things. You can mute, you can solo, etc., etc., and you can go to additional settings as well for, for the track where you can remove it, duplicate it, etc., etc. When you finish, click on the X to exit. Of course, you can select like so. Okay. But then on the right hand side here, you have a menu which allows you to select the phrase, rhythm, uh, scale chords, etc, etc. So let's stick to scale and let's go to example down here and let's select, the, I don't know, actually a synth and then click and drag and drop in one of the track like so. And now let's go back to the beginning and click play. Okay, that is really interesting. Right click. Um, Let's go back to the general here. Let's click edit for pigment and let's change the type of uh, uh, preset that we are using. I don't know. Let's go for uh, this Beethoven and let's see what it sounds like. Okay, that's nice. So as you can imagine, you can go to the next track like so. Let's say that you want to create a base, a baseline, click and drag and drop in this area here and you have a baseline, right? And then right click here on this track and then select, for example, an instrument, which can be also sound fonts, all right? Or you can choose from different instruments as well, which have been detected. So in this case, let's go to OBXT and let's click edit then let's click on the menu here let's go to the banks and let's select the base one and then um, let's click uh, play okay and as you can see it's a little bit low so i will probably would expand it like that and then i could scroll like that Okay, and I click stop. So that's one way that you can actually do it. As I said, you have access to phrase editor. So if I was to double click on one, I would go here on the phrase editor, which where you can actually change it, but you can also go inside a melody uh, editor as well. And of course, play. And as you can see, you can regenerate, randomize. There are so many controls that I will explain as we go along the different tutorials. Okay, I'm going to stop here for this introduction. I hope you enjoyed and see you at the next tutorial. Thank you. Bye.